Empathic Listening. Welcome to the Empathic Listening class. My name is Kelsey Morell, and I will be your Empathic Listening guide today. I look forward to the time we will spend together, learning more about one of our core values and a foundational stone for effective communication, Empathic Listening. To get us started in the right mind frame, I want us to first stop and think about the word skill. How does something get to be a skill? Are most skills natural? Do we have to practice to fine tune our skills? Consider that for a moment. How many of you taking this class have taken classes about reading? Writing? How about public speaking? How often have you taken a class about effective listening? Communication is the most important skill in life. We spend most of our day communicating in some way. But consider this. You spent years learning how to read and write. Years learning how to speak. But what about listening? Why is listening so important? In order to influence anyone, me, your boss, your husband, your wife, or your child, you must understand them. If you really want to master the habit of mutual understanding, you must build the skill of empathic listening. Empathic listening is the basis of Habit 5 of the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. This habit has two parts. First, seek to understand, then to be understood. We will spend our time on the first part of the habit, since that is where we usually need the most help. And we can't really seek to be understood until we see things from the other's perspective. The principle of Habit 5 is to communicate effectively, we must first understand each other. Effective communication takes place only in an environment of trust. The more people understand one another, the more they trust one another. What determines the results we get at home or at work? Our behavior. And what drives our behavior? How we see things. In order to get different results, we have to change not only what we do, but how we see things as well. Therefore, how we see things determines what we do, which in turn determines the results we get. Another word for see is paradigm. Our paradigm is how we see, understand, and interpret the world. Paradigms can be compared to windows through which we all see our own world. Every person sees the world a little differently. We all have our own paradigms. Understanding this is key to empathic listening because empathic listening means trying to understand the other person's paradigm, trying to see through the other person's window. As we review this diagram, we can really see how our paradigm of seeing things affects everything that we do. There are two ways that you can approach the C paradigm. The ineffective way, which is, I listen with the intent to reply. If we hold this paradigm, we are preparing our responses as we listen to others instead of really trying to understand. The focus is on our needs and desires, not the speakers. The other approach is the effective. It says, I listen with the intent to understand. Instead of focusing on your own opinions or responses, highly effective people listen for real understanding. They might ultimately agree or disagree with the speaker, but while they're listening, They've set aside their opinions so that their minds are clear enough to really hear and feel what is being said. A natural next step in this diagram is the behavior, or the do. The way we perceive a situation naturally leads to the behavior or actions we engage in. For example, if we perceive or see a situation or conversation as relaxed and inviting, we are more likely to engage in behavior that supports that type of conversation, such as joking or laughing. Consider the natural shift from see to do when you listen with the intent to reply. You often miss the true meaning of what the speaker is saying, and in turn, your behavior then prescribes or answers rather than truly understanding the real problem. A natural next step to truly listening for understanding is to actually listen empathetically. The way we see things drives our behavior, which in turn drives results. When we see things from others' perspectives and truly understand what they are feeling and saying, we engage in behaviors that drive positive results. These results look like 
greater influence with others because people feel heard and they feel understood. We find solutions to complex problems because we have taken the time to both listen and really try to understand the real problem, which brings clarity. We are also able to engage in faster problem solving to get better results because we have gotten to the root of the problem. So what gets in the way of listening effectively? Well, things like lack of time. Perhaps we have our own agenda. And let's face it, there are always distractions. And sometimes we have a hard time listening effectively because we feel that we're right and the others are wrong. One of the biggest obstacles to real communication is our tendency to use our own experience and opinions as models for others to follow. This is called responding autobiographically. The key to effective communication is learning to listen empathically instead of responding from our own autobiographies. We tend to come from one of these different um, responses when we are communicating with others. Either we fall in the advising category where someone comes to us with a problem and we want to tell them how to solve it. We tend to ask probing questions because we want to know, we want to understand. Sometimes we need help understanding things from our own perspective. Interpreting is another response. Explaining another person's motives and behaviors based on our own experience because we have a need to want to figure people out. Evaluating is also another response. Judging, agreeing or disagreeing. Suppose a friend came to you and said, I just got fired. We respond autobiographically from our own frame of reference when we, one, we advise. Well, you better update your resume. Perhaps our frame of reference is probing. When, who fired you, why? Perhaps we come from the interpreting. Well, you didn't really like that job anyway. Or perhaps you evaluate. Well, that's terrible. They shouldn't have done that. One of the keys to empathic listening is to give other people psychological air or space so they can explore their own point of view and their feelings. Responding with autobiographical responses provides no air. It prescribes the cure without diagnosing the problem first. 